Hey YouTube friends, a big welcome to you all. Um, I had so much fun with my last video that I did last week that I decided to come back and uh, I just couldn't wait to come back and be with you all. So my name is Desi and this is Desi's Crochet Cubby. I'm going to tell you a little bit of um, what my channel is about. It's about crochet projects, about um, whips, works in progress, FOs, finished objects, UFOs, unfinished objects, and also uh, it's about future ideas and future projects. And my goal is there to help complete crochet beginners and beginner crocheters on their journey to keep them growing and keep them learning. And I'm here to encourage and to, to inspire and to, to educate and hopefully to entertain you all once in a while, you know. <laughs> and um, company. Company is really, really important and crochet community. We got to have crochet community. And I do this through uh, vlogs and podcasts and tutorials. And also have uh, some general chit chat here and there. And... Uh, I think that's really nice. It just makes it personal. So this video, this is going to be about a work in progress, a whip um, that I've been working on. And I only have just a smidge left to do on it. And, I, and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. I want to show you some acquisitions in this YouTube video. And I wanted to be able to tell you a few more tidbits about myself. I told you a little bit in the first video. Um, and if you're interested, just go back and see my very first video, my very first YouTube video. So this is episode two. But first I wanted to say that I'm loving this new journey that I'm on um, through, the, through my YouTube ch uh, channel because I don't get out much. And for a long time, um, I've just been feeling not very useful and feeling like, what is my purpose? What is my purpose in life? I'm 56 years old and disabled and I was just kind of getting, you know, down in the down in the dumps. And then I came across YouTube and I just started watching videos and I was like, you know, I can do that. I want to give that a try. So, but anyway, I am very loving it very, very much. Um, there is a downside though, because of my disabilities. Um, work, the working behind the scenes part of this, there is a lot to put in YouTube, um, YouTube content together and the setting up, there's just a whole lot to it. And one of the disabilities that I have is, um, chronic fatigue, uh, let's see, I always forget the name of it, M-E-C-F-S, no, it's M-E slash C-F-S or S-E-I-D. And I don't even know what that stands for. All I know is when I'm fatigued, I'm out of it. And it doesn't take a whole lot. It, I mean, it just, I get so tapped of my energy. But even with that said, I'm willing to do all of that because it's worth it and you're worth it. And just the crochet community and just this whole thing, it's just brings so much joy to me. And I'm very, very, very happy to be here. And I thank you so much for being here with me. I just love crocheting and I like sharing my makes and uh, I just really, really appreciate it and I'm appreciative of all of you being here with me. Um, eventually I would like to try doing some yarn swaps. I've heard about it. I don't know a whole lot about it, but I'd like to learn about it and I'd like to figure out how to do that and maybe we all could do that together. Um, and I'd also like to put together some beginner like I said, uh, complete beginner crochet and beginner crochet tutorials is, is what I would like to put together. I just think that would be very nice because I know when I was starting out, I had no clue where to start. All I knew is I, I wanted to crochet. So I started with uh, looking things up in the internet and that was a long trip trying to figure all of that out. It was like putting puzzle pieces together. Um, but I did put it together. But who wants to do that when you have somebody that you know can help you out and, and show you the way? So, you know what? Last time I showed my little doggy, and I'll bet you want to see him. 
I think you see him right. Whoops. <laughs> I still haven't got this woo, whole thing together with trying to point for, for the video. There's my little doggie, and I'm going to grab him and have him say a little hello. Come here, Jig Jig. Let's say hello. Come on, sweetheart. My little sweetheart heart. Oh, pardon me while I get my wire all untangled. I'm going to have to get a wireless mic. Oh, oh, lavalier mic. But this is my little buddy. There he is. My little sweetheart. Yes. He's a sleepy boy today. Let me show you guys. Yeah, that's my baby. He's four pounds and he's 10 years old. And that's all he'll ever be, four pounds. <laughs> he got all groomed up just for the camera today. He got a bath. He got his nails done. He smells so good. But he's not thrilled to be up here because he does not like all the equipment. <laughs> it scares him. Yeah, he says, let me alone. I just want to go back to my bed. He said, do, I just want to go back to my bed. Oh, mm, I love him so much. Anyway, this is Jiggy. That's Jiggy. Yeah, my little boy. You go back. You go back to your bed. Uh, yeah, he's my little sweetheart. On another note, I have a question for you all. First of all, do you enjoy hummingbirds? And do you enjoy putting out hummingbird feeders? And the other question is, if you do and if you have, have you been having a problem with um, bees getting all over your hummingbird feeders and making it so that the uh, little hummingbirds can't even come and drink the stuff that you put out for them in the feeders? Because my husband and I, we've been having a time with the bees. We put the hummingbird feeders out and then we like to sit outside because the little hummingbirds will come pretty close to us because the feeders are close and they trust us. But as of late, yellow jackets all over the place, all over the feeders. And then when we go to sit outside, they're all over us. So we're swatting and, you know, just getting infuriated because you can't even go outside because you're going to, you know, just the bees are telling you, get out of here. This is my territory. So, oh my gosh, it's something else. I was just so, I'm just wondering, are any of you dealing with that? And if you are, would you please put in the comments if you figured out a way so that uh, <laughs> maybe you can out, we can outsmart the bees and feed our little hummingbird buddies and just be able to enjoy that because that is a big enjoyment, especially for my husband because that's sort of like one of his hobbies. He loves his little hummingbirds and he was devastated because somebody online, he went online and he asked people who are hummingbird lovers and have hummingbird feeders, he asked them, what can I do? And they said, well, they bring their hummingbird feeders in for a few days and that gets rid of the bees. But I told my husband, I said, that don't make much sense to me because as soon as you put your hummingbird feeders back out there, here comes the bees. And he's like, he said to me, um, well, maybe not. Well, you know what? <laughs> it happened again. He put the feeders out there and the bees are back. So, I don't know. We, we didn't have this problem before, but they're, they're just swarming all over the, the feeders. I don't know what's going on. So in the comments below, would you let me know? Tell me what, what you're doing to outsmart the bees. <laughs> and if you love hummingbirds, and if you have hummingbird feeders outside, but they're they're just ruin our, ruining our time outside. Uh, you know what? I can't get my daughter off my mind. It was her birthday the other day, September 1st. She's 37 years old, and I just wanted to give her a big shout out. Happy birthday! I know she had a good, good birthday. Um, I saw some pictures that she posted on uh, Facebook and she got lots of wonderful things and I saw some beautiful roses, some, some uh, I think some kind of chocolates, 
Uh, she got a card from her daughter. She got a phone call from her son that's not living with her right now. And uh, I, th I think she really had a good birthday. I'm very happy for her. It makes my heart so filled with joy when I know that my daughter's smiling and that she's a happy woman. Because there was a time she wasn't so happy and she didn't smile so much. But uh, I think those days are past. She's, she says these are her best years yet and she feels like she's just getting started with her life. So yay, Jazzy. <laughs> I love you. Um, you know, she was born in the 80s. And uh, my son, he was born in 87 and my daughter was born in 85. And the 80s were such a great decade. And I'm just curious, um, any of you, what, what do you think about the 80s? Like, were you, um, like, just born in the 80s? Were you going to high school like I was in the 80s? Um, just tell me what you thought of that decade. I mean, those were some of the best times of my life. And just the 80s were awesome. <laughs> and, and at one time I actually had big hair. And I remember my, my sister coming to visit me and uh, I, was, I was in my early 20s. I can't remember exactly how old I was. She came to visit me and she hadn't visit me, visited me for a long time. And uh, <laughs> I just remember her telling me, oh my gosh, you have so much hair. And uh, <laughs> she, she's what, a person that always has good tact. Very, very good about that. And uh, she said in her own gentle way, Valerie is her name. Um, I just, she has a pretty name, that's a pretty name. But uh, yeah, she says, you had such a tiny face and you have all of this hair. <laughs> so I don't know. I, I thought it was nice. I don't know. I guess because everybody in the 80s, well, not everybody, but a lot of people had big hair and it was just the thing. So I guess I was in for once in my life. But it wasn't long after that. I got to thinking about what she had said and I did get my hair cut and I did get it kind of short. So, Valerie, you're the blame why I have short hair. <laughs> and I love you, Val. <laughs> Oh my goodness. So anyway, comment below please about the 80s if you have anything to share from the 80s. Um, later I want to tell you a secret and, uh, and a surprise, a secret surprise, whatever you want to call it. So stay tuned through my video because you never know when I'm going to talk about it. <laughs> it would be nice if you stuck around. Um, and also uh, I had learned about um, Oh, what are they called? Time, oh, time codes, I think they're called or something here for YouTube. So that um, I'm going to try, I got to learn about that exactly how to do that. But I want to try to put them in the, in the description box of the video. Have the timestamps for you so that you can click around on uh, in different, like you'll see the titles and stuff like that for uh, this, the bar that goes across the video and you can click on that and on the time codes and it'll take you to just a certain spot of where you want to be because of what the title or whatever you say for the, the little titles for the codes on each um, section of the video. So if I'm going to try to do that. I'm not guaranteeing, but I am going to try. I'm giving this my best shot. <laughs> There's so much to learn yet. Um, I'm going to start with my acquisitions that I have. Uh, yeah. I want to start with a little story first. Because this, this has to do with, um, sort of, with, with uh, one of the acquisitions that I have. In uh, 2000, in the year 2000, my dad had passed away. And I had taken it harder than I expected that I ever would. And um, so in his um, memory, I went and got a tattoo. It was the only tattoo that I had ever had. And I'm going to show you that. So um, pardon the bra strap, but who hasn't seen those before? 
it's not the, the nicest, but whatever. Um, this is a Pegasus. And up here at the top, it used to have Missing You Daddy, the words. Um, and then, of course, this was a rainbow, and that signified my dad going up to heaven. And this sort of signified his spirit, you know, with the wings. Um, the rainbow, of course, signifying God. But it said, Missing You Daddy, right up here. Well, the weird thing is that after I had, think I had finally accepted my dad's passing, after five years, um, those words disappeared. Everything else was bright. I mean, it's not really, really bright on this video, but it was really strange. It was like at the same time, those words disappeared as the brown, the same time that I finally had accepted my dad's passing. So I just wanted to share that. And that has to do with this. I'll show you here as soon as I get it out. I got a package. A little package, very thin, but uh, let's see, it was the other package. There we go. I got myself a unicorn pair of scissors, and they are high quality stainless steel rainbow unicorn embroidery scissors, and it's the first nice pair of scissors that I have ever gotten, and it's not exactly a Pegasus. But I like unicorns and I like pegasists. I used to have a uh, oh, clay molding or something that I'd gotten from some store. People made them, um, put them in molds and made them. It was a really, really nice pegasus. I might have it around my apartment here somewhere. I think I do somewhere. I hope I can dig that out at some point. And then my dad had a little unicorn um, little trinket thing that he kept on his table. I ended up handing that down to my son. So I really don't have anything now except for this. <laughs> and this is a unicorn. But like I said, I like unicorns and uni... What is it called? Uni Pegasus also, which is a combination with the horn and the, the wings. So this is the only pair of nice scissors that I have. And even though they're for embroidery, they work nice for the crochet and it is a nice unicorn. So I wanted to show you that. I'm very pleased that I got that for myself. Very, very pleased. They're so pretty and my favorite colors are in the blue family and this is sort of like a teal or an aqua and that you'll find is one of my favorite colors. Um, the other thing is, and I've been waiting on these for a long time. <laughs> get the other one out here. I know I have three of them. These are the large eye, large hook uh, wool needles that Jada and Stitches had spoke of. And I was so jealous when I kept seeing her using them. I finally got some. The blue one, the tealish one, is the, the tallest of them all. But you can see the the uh, large eyes on them. See how big they are? You can see that. Maybe if I put it up against some other... Yeah, they're pretty large. But I can't wait to start using these. I've got like a rusty color, a nice little pink reddish color, and my favorite. This one's the biggest of them all. Like I said, it's pretty, a lot bigger than the other ones. I can't wait. I'm excited to use those because I have the little plastic ones. And these ones are like stainless steel. So that will be nice. The other thing I got. Now, in my first video, if you um, hadn't seen that, you can go back and watch that if you would like. But I had spoke of my... Um, gift, uh, it was a crocheted cupcake, drawstring cupcake purse that I made from Jada and Stitch's uh, tutorial that I had watched. And I made that and then I gave it to my granddaughter at her 16th birthday party. And I had promised her that I would make her a choker. 
a choker necklace. And I asked her, um, when I make that, would you like me to have something, something that I can attach to the front that will dangle down? And she said, yes, a little lock. Well, I ordered one, and I cannot believe how little this thing is. Can you? I mean, it's barely a speck. Well, anyway, it's a little, little lock. You know, like you would put on a locker, say a gym locker or something. <clears throat> so that's going to go on her little choker. And I think the bag was even cuter. <laughs> a little drawstring, little purple bag. Very cute. And this is, uh, let's see, colored bird cotton. Four strand, two millimeter. Number three, 220 yards, high quality cotton. This is yarn thread, that's what I'm gonna use. She said she wanted orange. And this is definitely like an orangish color. Um, doesn't say the color on it, but you can tell that it's orange. And I'm not sure if I remember her saying she wanted uh, uh, beads on this. I can't remember. I'm going to have to ask her. I can't remember. So those are my acquisitions. Yeah, to tell you a little bit more my, about myself so that, I don't know, I just think that that, that bonds people together in friendship. And that's what I want to do is I want to make friends on here. I want to be your friend. I think it's really important for the crochet community. We all need to get together. We are bonded with um, through yarn, <laughs> through our hobby, through our crafts, through our love of crochet. So I just telling you guys more about me, I think would be good. And you know, I would like to hear a little bit about you. So if you don't mind, share what you want to share uh, down in the comments. I would really appreciate it. That would be great. I mean, that way it's not a one-sided relationship. I wanted to tell you that my career basically was working as a nurse's aide. I worked in nursing homes. I've worked in um, a hospital, which I loved very, very much. I think I enjoyed that more than the nursing home. Really liked working at the hospital. Um, then after that, I worked with Biota Home Health, and I think I had two different people that I took care of, helped, um, helped along because they had disabilities. They really needed care. Boy, did I love that. I just loved the personal aspect of it. But of course, my health took its toll, and it, at some point, I want to tell you guys the story behind that. It's a little bit long. Uh, Boy, I've had the journey, I'll tell you. Um, so if you'd like to hear about that, let me know. At some point, I really, truly will try to figure out how I can tell you about that because just a really crazy journey. So that dropped me out of the workforce. And uh, yeah. And I also went to nursing school. Uh, I can't remember exactly what year that was, but I was doing very well. I was enjoying it. I was really surprising myself how well I was doing with that. I was, I was going to be an LPN, and uh, I had high hopes for that. And then, uh, dang, disabilities, I tell you, it just struck me again, knocked me down. And I just thought, you know, I'm not going to be able to do this. I just, I just can't. It's not... It's not in the, uh, what do they call that? It's not in the cards for me. And for years, I, I would think about that and think about that and be disappointed in myself and uh, dream about nursing school and just like going back. And man, I really wanted to do that. It's not in the cards for me. This is in the cards for me. This is perfect for me. You guys, being with you guys, helping you out. You know, just, just being here, doing our crochet thing, getting our crochet thing on, <laughs> our crochet mojo, keeping our crochet mojo up, helping each other keep our crochet mojo up, right? So the other thing I wanted to let you know, that 
Oh, and also, uh, as you already know, but I like pegasists and unicorns and unipegasists. And I like panda bears and koala bears and polar, be polar bears, rainbows and waterfalls and gemstones. I like rings. I like rings like crazy. I only have like maybe two. <laughs> this one's really pretty. I like that one. It's a greenish color. Um, but I have the problem that if I don't wear white gold, I mean, even when I put these earrings in today, immediately my ears turned red, beet red. So I'll have to take them out after this, you know, after this video's done. But uh, yeah, I gotta wear white gold. And my daughter has the same thing. She has the very same thing. So those are a couple of things about myself that I wanted to share. And I would like to know if you have any ideas, pics, or links um, about crochet. I, I like amigurumi. I like doing big, big, big amigurumi projects, um, medium size amigurumi, maybe some little bit of small ones. But uh, I do not have any of those amigurumi books. Um, I don't know the animal ones, the all kinds of different ones, but they're beautifully illustrated and one day I'd really like to have some of them books. So one day I'm going to get some of them books because I want to take the patterns out of them and um, we'll take from the patterns that are in them and just make all kinds of wonderful things and I just think I would really enjoy that and then when I make them I can share them with you all. I just would really love that. So I think it's time to get on to my project that I'm going to be showing you here. Um, let's um, let me show you the, let's see here, I will show you the brands and the colors that I used. Let's see. I don't have much left of this one. It is the Lion Brand Basic Stitch. It's anti-pilling. It's deep denim. Um, I don't know if it's called deep denim heather or just deep denim. 100% acrylic. 3.5 ounces, 100 gram, 185 yards is what I started with. Four medium weight, machine washable, dry low, and medium heat. That's like I said, it's all I have left. There's not very much from my project. I also used <coughs> Karen Simply Soft, excuse me. You know what? My camera is actually showing up better this time than it did on the first on my first video. You can actually see the words and stuff on there. Yay me! Starting to figure things out. So this is pumpkin and this is a four medium worsted. Um, I also used Karen, I don't know exactly what they called it, but this is all I had left of a brown color. So I mostly used brown on the project, a little bit of pumpkin, <clears throat> and a little bit of that blue. I kept trying to use this color, but you know, it just didn't go in the project. I love this color. I love my blues, I love my teals, my turquoise, my aquas, and this is called Ocean. Karen Simply Soft, but I did not use that in my project, but oh, I just love that color. It is beautiful. Look how shiny that is. Karen Simply Soft always has a sheen to it. <clears throat> I just love it. So anyway, the Karen Simply Soft, 100% acrylic, six ounces, 170.1 grams, 315 yards, four medium weight. Um, anyway, it wasn't a good match. That color was not a good match for, for my for my project that I'm going to show you here. Uh, for this project, you can use whatever you want to use. You can use a wool, you can use acrylic, you can use a blend, um, but you need to use a six millimeter J hook. Uh, that's a 10 in the US and a four in the UK. And for that's for the adult poncho and for the child size poncho, you would use a 5.5 millimeter hook uh, this project you work from the top down and then after that I did the 
the hood on it and I attached the hood. So I'm going to show you, well first of all, for the foundation chain for the adult size, you would um, do 56 chains for the adult and 48 chains for the child size. And this is for the main body. And this is the project. It is a poncho. And there, there's the back. And there's the side of the hood. And then, I'm just going to show it where it kind of just drapes down. And of course, there's the side. The sides. Put the hood in the front there. Kind of hard to show it like this, but then of course I've got, still got my stuff attached. I got my little stitch markers there, and I got my tail tail yet on there that I did not weave in, and I did that on purpose because I'm going to be making fringes to put on it. It works up, this project works up pretty fast, and it's going to be nice and cozy. It's, it's a really soft, I love that material. Oh, I wanted to show you too. I, I did 31 rows in the main body of this. So it would be like from the hood. Where's the hood there? The hood's kind of flopped in the back here. I'm going to flop to the front, flop to the back. And then what I did for the colors, I mean for the rows, all together from the brown at the, at the bottom of the hood, if you count and you go all the way down, there's 31 rows in the main body of this without the hood that I did. You can go as long as you want, but since I'm going to be adding fringe, um, I know that when it's washed, adding the fringe and and also when you wash it or even block it um, let it dry that's gonna the weight of it it's gonna pull it down so it's gonna make it appear longer so I took that into consideration so I only did 31 rows and I think that's what Jada suggested if I remember right but uh, I did from the from the bottom of the hood let's see how I can do this here there's the brown. Okay, so I did four rows of brown. But I did a lot of the brown and kind of just little squirts of the... My favorite was the blue. But boy, I'll tell you, that pops out really nice. That's going to be nice for autumn. I really like this poncho. It was my first attempt at doing it. I didn't do it perfect. I mean, I know this part around here isn't perfect. The rest of it I did a pretty good job then. I'm proud of it. I'm going to try to pop in a picture of when I first started it out. You did so many rows and it ended up being like a, a diamond shape. That. But uh, yeah, a good size for this poncho when you're making it is when you have your arms out like this. And your poncho's on, and then the the side actually comes down to your wrist. Then you know that you have a good size, and that you can probably stop with your rows at that point. Um, yeah, so you can you can block it if you want. You can uh, put towels over a hanger and then put your poncho over that and drape it down, which I probably won't do that because I don't like the idea that it might stretch it out. Or you could just lay it flat, let it dry. So, I want to give some the uh, beginner crocheters and the complete, well, I don't know, not, not the complete beginner crocheters, but they could still listen. But I think this would be more for the beginner crocheters, what I'm going to say, like an FYI for them would be for this pattern, you need to know the slip knot, the chain, the double crochet, the slip stitch, the single crochet, 
color change, you need to know what and where point stitches are, and you need to how, know how to make three double crochet into a stitch and five, five double crochet into a stitch. So th those are the things that you need to know to make this. Um, I think, like for me, it was my first poncho, and I learned best. My le best learning style is to watch somebody and then to try it myself, and that's why um, video tutorials are best for me. Uh, that's what I do. I, I like to do that. I like to have a pattern in front of me to kind of go off of both, but I actually do my best learning and following and making along with the video tutorials. So I don't know what your learning style is. Why don't you comment below? I think that would be interesting. Other people could get to read your comments. I'll get to read your comments. And we can find out what our learning styles are. And if, we if you don't know what the different learning styles are, maybe you can look that up online if you're interested. And uh, that might help you. Because I know that has helped me once I found out what my learning style was and I caught on to that. It really made a big difference. It was like a light bulb going off. So I made the hood separately on this. Um, you make the hood and then you attach it. Get this thing together here again. Um, yeah, like I said, there's the hood. Flopped, flopped back. Where the brown begins, um, where the pumpkin is and where the brown is, that's where I attached, attached the hood. Uh, let's see, for the hood, that was a Jada and Stitches, you could just type in Jada and Stitches forward slash poncho hoodie or poncho hood, or you could type in crochet poncho with hoodie episode two YouTube podcast, I think is what she called hers. So for this, for the hood part of it, you need, for, uh, found, for the foundation chain, you would chain up for the adult size 56, you would, and for the larger adult, you would foundation chain of 72, and for the child, foundation chain of 48. You would use a six millimeter hook for the adult size, 5.5 for the child size, and the yarn, needed is 96 yards for the child size and 112 to 144 yards for the adult. And the hood colors that I used, of course, are the same colors that I used throughout the poncho. But what I'm going to do is show you, and it would be showing you from, from hood up here. So I did a few rows of the brown. Um, I did five rows of pumpkin. I did eight rows of the deep denim. Um, let's see here. Two rows of brown, one row of the deep denim, then onto the brown again, right where the hood is at the top here. So if you wanted to try it like I did, those are the things that I did. And for the fringes, I need to attach fringes yet. And what you do is you need 11 inches, cut 11 inches of, col of the colors that you used, or if you want to use a different color for the fringes, but I like the idea of using the same colors. So 11 inches, um, or 27 centimeters, you need 10 to 12 color strips of each, of each of them, of each of the colors. So you cut um, 10 to 12, say for instance, of the pumpkin. T and 10 to 12, say for instance, of the brown, or 10 to 12 strips um, of the denim blue. So here's three of them. One, two, and what you would do, I'm going to take the pumpkin color and the brown color, try to make them even, and I'm going to pretend that this is a stitch, this hole. Okay, I'm going to turn around. What you would do is you would take, take your strip, 
turn it down like that so that you would have a loop. Now remember, here's your stitch. I'm going to take and pull this through with my hook through the stitch. So there's the loops, okay? I pulled them through the, the stitch. And what I would do, once that's pulled through, is I would take and flop that over the top where the loop is, put my fingers through the loop, grab on to that that's hanging, pull it through, and then just pull it tight onto the stitch. And this part is what, you know, you've got to make sure that those line up before you pull it tight up here. And that would be your fringes, just two strands per stitch onto the bottom edge of your poncho. And what you would do is you would take, let's see, I got my pumpkin and I've got my brown right now. I'm going to take and put, take the pumpkin part away, keep the brown, and I'm going to add for my next stitch, it would be every, every other stitch on the poncho along the edging. Every other, not every. So here's my two new colors together, and I would do the same thing. And that, just, you know, alternate your colors is all you would do. So that's what I have left to do on my poncho, and that is it on the poncho for the work. But I'm telling you, it's been a lot of fun. It really has. Um, you know, you know what? I was just now thinking. I have a thought. I'm, I'm just a tiny baby little channel here, a, a little baby YouTube channel. I only have, like, this is my second episode. So, um, I do need to ask you, if you're so inclined, if you would um, give me a like, give me a thumbs up, um, share my videos, uh, and subscribing is really, really important. That way... It helps me grow my channel and it also helps so that you don't have to, like if you want to see another video from me, um, pardon me for, I'm going to get situated here. If you want to see another video for me, you don't have to go and searching for it because if you subscribe to YouTube, to my channel, then, I mean, you'll make an account subscribe and then it will bring my videos to you every time I upload it'll just come to you. So I think that is fantastic. So subscribing. Um, as much as the liking and the subscribing and the sharing is important, watch time is really, really important. It's how long somebody sticks on your channel <laughs> that they stick around, that they watch it through. So yeah, that would be pretty awesome. I mean, I'm working on trying to make my videos not so long, but this is a learning curve. It's a learning process for me. Like I said, this is a baby channel. It just got started, so a little bit of leeway. <laughs> I'm doing good. I think I'm really doing good. I'm trying hard, and what I'm going to try to do, um, I haven't figured out whether I'm going to do my video uploads on uh, Fridays or Mondays. I haven't made up my mind, but I would like to try to get videos out weekly for you all. So I'm trying. And now, like I promised, I promised you that I had a secret. I had a secret surprise. And that is, guess who the poncho's for? Jazzy, I bet you can guess. <laughs> it's for your birthday. It's for my daughter. It's for Jazzy. Happy birthday, kiddo. homemade gift and I really put the heart into that and I was thinking about you the whole time I was making that and I hope that these colors are going to be all right for you like I said I know it's not perfect this part on the the hood could have been sewn a little bit better but I think you're gonna like that so I'm not sure but, uh, I do want to get that out to you and I can't wait till you try it on 
Um, I don't know how you feel about fringes. I think they might be coming back in style. I think they'll look nice on this anyway. I don't think it's going to look tacky. So anyway, for you all, that is for my daughter. For her 37th birthday, she gets the poncho. Yay! Happy birthday, kiddo. I love you. <laughs> so that is that. I told you about the poncho. I told you the little secret. Um, <laughs> I hope that you all will will keep coming back and watching my videos. It means a lot to me. It really, really means a lot to me that you're here, that you have chosen to take your time out of your busy schedule. And even if you're just relaxing, that you took the time to click on my channel. It means a lot to me that you're here. Thank you so, so much from the bottom of my heart. And I... I just want you to be able to see, you know, um, to learn more about me with each video. And uh, with each video, hopefully I can be able to show you lots and lots of makes because that's what I'd like to do. And sometimes once in a while I do get stuck on one project. But I'm going to, I mean, I, the biggest thing I really like to do is I like to make a lot of different projects because I get bored easy. So a lot of different projects working on, uh, you know, here and there, like spread out. I like a lot of whips. You know, some people say, oh, I want to get down to work in just one whip all the time. That's so important to me. I hate having so many, and that's fine. But for me, I really enjoy having a lot. It takes the boredom out of it. I just, I get, it gets stale for me. I don't know. My mind needs <laughs> more stimulation than that, I suppose. So, so that was that for my poncho. Down below, hopefully in the description box, I'll have my um, email down there, uh, a link for Instagram, my Happy Mail address, and a link for Amazon wish list, which I'm not, sh hopefully that's working properly now. I'll have to check it out. I hope it is. If it's not, let me know. Um, and uh, and uh, I just think it's really important. Take some time out for yourself. Do some things that you really, really enjoy because when your spirit is filled, when it's filled with joy and when it's filled with happiness, it, it spills over. And then you know what? We're able to, to better spread that joy around other people. We're happier. We're just more delightful to be around. So I just think, I just think that that's really, really important fill ourselves up first and then we can fill others up too. <laughs> so you know what? I think it's time for me to do some snips, some shells, and some weaving in of them darn yarn tails. <laughs> so 